Oh my God, that is just sensational. That is absolutely fantastic. That is really good. Hello everyone, following on the success of my uh, previous attempt at doing some baking, I've been inundated online by people wanting more of brewer from the kitchen at home with the brewers. So I thought, or me and Michelle thought, we'd bring you our Moscow Mules. Now, my Moscow Mules have got a bit of legend about them uh, because uh, those around me that have had one of my Moscow Mules and tasted them, they absolutely love them. So I'm gonna show you how I put a Moscow Mule together, being that it's a nice time to be at home and self-isolate and uh, raid the drinks uh, cabinet. I thought I'd show you how I put my Moscow Mule together uh, because I do a couple of little twists to mine and I hope you enjoy it. As you can see, I'm in my full Easter paraphernalia with the hat and my Easter bonnet on, and we've got all the uh, all the Easter paraphernalia down here. The little the little chicklets have come out to uh, enjoy Easter, and they've each got a little Easter egg as well. But we've even got a little uh, chick up here on the bottle of the goose. He's actually sitting on the goose. The chick is on the goose, which is good. So, how do I make the perfect Moscow meal? Well, it starts off with a copper mug. And the copper mug is very, very important because there's a little bit of history to the copper mug. Uh, we've got quite a few copper mugs in this house. Uh, we seem to acquire them every time we tend to go out. Uh, if you're an establishment that has copper mugs and Mrs. B goes to your establishment, then the chances are um, we're coming home with a copper mug. So uh, we've got plenty of copper mugs, haven't we, Michelle? Loads. <laughs> Where do they come from? Different places. <laughs> All over the world. Right, I'm going to tell you a little bit of history as well. About, um, a little bit of history about the Moscow Mill because it's really interesting. Is it an as animal? I'm... No, 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 no. It's not even about Russia. It's oh, a drink Moscow. invented. No, yeah, Moscow. It's a drink that's invented. Funny enough, it's invented in Hollywood, California. What are you doing? I'm going to show you what I'm doing in a minute. I'm just going to tell you a little bit of history. 1941, Sophie Berezinki, she was from Russia. Her dad owned a copper... You said it wasn't Russia. No, but she... Not the drink isn't, but the... Right, let me get this right. Sophie Berezinki, she was in Russia in 1941. Oh, she was in Russia. She was Russian. She, oh, she was Russian. She was Russian. <laughs> well, I haven't even got to the drink yet. Right? She was Russian. Her dad owned a copper foundry and she got her dad to make some copper mugs. Ah, she thought a bit like me. Because they hold the drinks cooler, right? Do they? Um, and they tried to sell them and they couldn't sell them. They had 2,000 of these copper mugs, they couldn't sell them anywhere. So she decided to go to America uh, to try and sell the copper mugs. She walks into a bar. Did she have uh, wheels bar, on the suitcase? She had loads of copper mugs in her Did suitcase. Did she have wheels? No. I don't know. Not Where did she days. carry all those copper mugs well, around? she didn't have 2,000 in one case. She had a sample. I'm sure she had a sample. Anyway, she goes into a bar. She meets a guy called John Martin, who's just acquired a company called Smirnoff, a vodka company that was little known back then. They were sitting in a bar owned by a guy called genuinely Jack Morgan. The bar what? was called... Are you making this up? No, the bar was called Cock and Ball. So it could be a Cock and Ball story, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, so they've got copper mugs they can't sell. The bloke who owned the bar likes to do homebrew and he's been brewing ginger beer that nobody likes and he can't sell it. And there's a guy who got this new found fugger from Russia and he wants What's to sell it. What's it called? It. Fugger. Vodka. Oh, who said fucker. <laughs> Good luck. It sounded like right it. Right from Russia. Oh, yeah. And he needs to sell that. <laughs> Vodka. And you he didn't say, have you had one Again, already? I haven't had one. I'm just, let Jeez, me get this out. It's a good story. You've ruined the story now. Anyway, the three of them Why sat there. Why are you still there. doing that then? The three of them sat there. They combined their three uh, things that they had and the Moscow Mule was born. And here we are, 100 years later, almost, and people are still enjoying it. And it's one of my favourite staples of drink. I absolutely love the Mos uh, love hey, Moscow Mule. Are you sure you one. haven't had one? Well, I had a sample. And um, uh, I'm going to show you how to do my one. Now, what I'm doing here with the lime is I'm rubbing the lime, and that's to break inside the, uh, the, the the actual lime itself. It just breaks it up inside. It makes it a little bit more juicy. So one whole lime, slice it in half, and then slice it in a quarter. Right. Bargain limes. Well, they From my bargain. favorite shop. Would be bargain if they come with you guys. Right, yeah. so that's just your limes prepared, right? That's all you need to do. Now, vodka, I always go for the king of the vodka, my favorites. 
The Goose, uh, which why I Why is do... it called The Goose? I just now. love Grey Goose. I don't know why. Yeah, but where did the name I, come I, from? Personally, I reckon... This is not an ad. I, no, it's not an ad. I'm not being paid for. But why is it called Goose? This Grey is not Goose? a sponsored advert. Why is it know. called Grey Goose? I reckon I send Mr. Grey Goose and his extended family on holiday every year to a five-star villa somewhere in the south of France, all paid for by me and my friends. Why is it the best one, then? I just like it. It's just nice. It's expensive, but I like it. Right, not so when it's on oh, offer. Not when it's on offer. <laughs> not when it's on offer. No, so a, a couple of fingers worth of Grey Goose into your copper mugs. Other vodkas available. Other vodkas are available. As I say, I'm not being paid a penny by anyone to do this, but I do like that stuff. So that's my uh, that's my vodka. Then, this is a nice one. This is Mrs. B's uh, lime juice. You can use any lime juice. I bargain, like this lime bargain. juice. Uh, this is good lime juice. So what you want with lime juice is you want two good squirts. One, oh. two squirts, like that. Squirt, squirt. Two good squirts of lime juice. Do you shake it before you do that? No. Not lime juice. Then take your uh, freshly cut limes and you want to squeeze your limes into the glass. Remember, Make there's going to sure be a Make sure you squeeze all of it out. All of it out. You're going to get a lot of juice out as well because you rub Don't them. Don't leave any behind. And you put that into your copper mug. Now, ice. Okay, don't worry, I have washed my hands. Uh, How much ice? I like a lot of ice in my Moscow meal because I like more ice, less ginger beer. Should if you it like. be crushed ice or lumpy ice? No, I like lumpy ice. You could do crushed ice. I mean, you could mix it up. Some people actually make this with. Whiskey as well, it's quite nice with whiskey. Or rum, you can right. do it with rum. Or you can do an alcohol-free version for the kiddies, if you wanted to. Now, this is Fiery Ginger Beer. There are lots of brands out there on the market. I like to choose a sugar-free Fiery Ginger Beer. I like the one that's um, from the Caribbean. I think you know the one I mean. Well, you're hiding <laughs> where it's from. I, oh, yes, no, it's not. I'm not hiding where it's from. It's Mrs. B's Fiery Ginger Beer. There you go. Bargain, Mrs. B's. bargain. <laughs> Bargain. Pour your ginger beer in. One. How much? Quite a bit. You want to just fill up the rest of the glass with the ginger beer. You know, look at that. That's perfect. That actually worked out perfectly. Oh. There you go. Look at that. Chloe's lips are licking. I can feel her in the background getting all excited. Do you drink it through now, a straw? Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the special no, no, no. ingredient. This is the special ingredient, right? This is the one. This is the one that all the chicks have been on. That's why they're all falling over. This is bitters. Right, you can use various different makes of bitters. I like to use Angus Durer's bitters. Why is it called bitters? Because it's got a very bitter taste to it. But you don't know and the history. Not, not everyone does Thank this. You. A lot of people don't do this with our Moscow mules. They don't put the bitters in. And this is the kicker. This is the bit that do makes you... my Moscow mule different from everybody else's. Do you only put it in last? I put it in last, always. Is there a reason for that? Yes. Why? Routine. No other reason. Right, and it's a couple of splashes. One, two splashes of bitters. One... Two. Oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. What happens if you put three, four in? Well, it just makes it more bittery. <laughs> right, and then a nice little stir. Keeping some of the bitters on top. Nice little stir. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect Easter Moscow meal brought to you with love from the brewers. Oh my God, that is just sensational. That is absolutely fantastic. <sighs> That is really good. That is fantastic. Uh, so um, from me and the family, cheers. Happy Easter. Stay at home. Have some fun. Be safe. Protect the NHS. And enjoy your Easter at home with the family. And cheers, And squeeze everyone. all the lemon out. Lime. Lime. Sorry.